binding protocol that um, as you make an arrangement, they'll bring her to the clinic where I was supposed to treat her. So the next day, that uh, I had to pay, that Saturday on the 19th, I had to pay 5000 into the school account. And they brought her to the clinic. But when she got there, she was asking me why I didn't come to pick her rather than make this. And I told them the school said, because of COVID-19 protocol, she'll be in isolation for seven days when she gets back. I don't want that for her, she said. That's a lie. Nobody stays in isolation. That the girl in the vehicle, there was another girl, was given an exit to go and go for her mother's birthday, and she was coming home for medical reasons. So I, I, I promised her I would go back and pick her after she goes back to school. So when she left, though we had some comments. She said they were very mean to her and all that. <laughs> When she left, I called the principal who said I can come and pick her, but when I got there, they wouldn't allow me to pick her. So I actually turned back to go home because they said they would take care of her. But on my way home, she called through the school phone and told me, you don't even know why I asked you to come and take me and you're going without me. And then her house mother, Mrs. Rita Abedidi, now told me that uh, I should disregard whatever the Metron was telling me, that on Wednesday, the 16th of June, Karen could not even walk to school. She had to be supported by her friends to go and take a test, which she wrote writing, that um, I should come back and make a lot of noise at the school gate so they'll allow me to take her home. So I came back, I kept on calling the principal and the metro, but they wouldn't pick my call, so I sent text messages to them. Eventually, the metro picked my call. I said they were going to release her to me. But it took close to an hour before she came to me. And when she got to me, the school also insisted that they must take a snapshot of my ID card before they were allowed to go. I have two other children that had gone through that school and it had never happened that they take a snapshot of my... I was confused, but I allowed them to do that. And then when she came to me, she came with her head bowed. She couldn't look me in the face. I brought her home through. She's a talkative. She couldn't talk. But on Sunday, she took ill. By Monday morning, took her to the hospital. In the process of treating her, they saw a discharge that was tested to be condom, and her urine had dead spermatozoa in it. So, early hours of Tuesday morning, she passed. But before she passed, I called the school authority the Monday, and they came. And they accepted responsibility and uh, expressed um, the regrets of that happening to her. But immediately she died, the page turned, started accusing me of being a careless mom and all that. And it had happened under my care. But she was in school when it happened. I reported to the FCT command on the 22nd, the same day she died. And it's not been a, a very good journey because somehow information like her medical report and the autopsy report they refused to release to us, they released to the school. We reported all the school had been doing because the principal in one of his interviews even said that if they had known there was a condom in her, they would have removed it. But they were seen not to be working. So on the 6th of October, we filed a petition for the case to be transferred to the first headquarters, which it was, and they're handling the case now. Leading to her death through hyperglycemia. Unfortunately, since it happened, the minister of the FCT feels unresponsible and unresponsive to the fact that a child died under his watch in circumstances that never should have happened. The Minister of Education, who should be embarrassed, Malam Adamu Adamu, that in a school under his watch, a child was allegedly raped and killed. Um, the Minister of Women Affairs, and Women and Children, and I refer to Dame Pauline Tallinn, no testimonial is as resounding as the testimonial the Paul in Tallinn are signed by a conspiracy of silence and inaction. 
since five months after Karen died. Is she in the know? Let us see that if any agent of government responsible for the safety of children and schools claims not to know, then they should already be sacked for negligence. Now, we had issued ultimatum last month to the Paul in Talen and to Mala Madamu Adamu that should they not speak, should they not take steps to mount the pressure and get the culprit, then we shall call them out. As we speak, I recall that two months ago, a boy who should never have died in the circumstance he died in federal government quali was allegedly beaten by a teacher and he died. The thing trended on social media. Within one hour of it trending, then Paul in Tallinn and Malama Adamu Adamu rose to take action because that little boy was grandson to a political bigwig. But when it came to Karen Apuch Ondo a 14 year old child of ordinary Nigerians, then Paul in Tallinn, in a hypocritical silence and inaction, kept quiet. Malam Adamu Adamu has kept quiet. Um, FCT minister, very irresponsibly silent. And we say we are calling them out. And we are asking the president and commander in chief, enough is enough. We cannot be losing our children, our family members to insurgents and all sorts of terrorist groups. And yet, we will have terrorists within the FCT and some allegedly in school facilities. And the president himself is silent. He has sent his men to do the job, ministers. They have failed woefully. They have failed to protect Karen. The same way they failed to protect um, Sylvester. Remember that Sylvester's own happened. And as soon as Sylvester's death occurred, Lagos, Lagos, the model city, immediately the government announced the closure of the school. That is global best practice. That is how a responsible and responsive government reacts. But in Abuja, and remember, the Sylvester's case, there is only the allegation that bullying occurred and led to the death of the child. Thank God the child was able to speak. They've not done autopsy report. They've not even talked about examination of the child to know what exactly happened. They want to do autopsy now. But for Karen Apuch, medical reports confirmed a 14-year-old girl had condom inside of her. The condom infected her with sepsis, spiked her blood sugar, and she died. That's medical reports. Incontrovertible about the facts of the medical report. Autopsy report, according to an interview granted to AIT by the FCT Police Command, Deputy Commissioner of Police, who was in charge of this case until we took it from him because of steps he took that showed us he was compromised. About seven days ago, and if you check on YouTube, you will see it, granted an interview to AIT, where he said, autopsy report showed that Karen Apuch on Dodo Apa was raped. The same police. So if there is a medical report and an autopsy report confirming that Karen Apuch was raped. It is even a stronger case than the case in Lagos because the case in Lagos does not even have an autopsy yet. There is no reason why these ministers I have called, other than the conspiracy of silence and inaction, serving the interest of the elites, will keep Premier Academy open till now, will not take steps by their silence and inaction. They incentivize rape, embolden pedophilia, embolden the rapist, make our schools unsafe for our children, and endanger humanity and our future. We shall call them out, and we shall ask the president, and we hereby ask him, do the needful, and so that history will be kind on you, that you protected, Mr. President, that you shouted when you should shout, and you sacked ministers for ignoble roles of silence and inaction in making us struggle and gravel and struggle. We should not be the ones shouting here. 
the government should have taken action. The National Human Rights Commission that we gave a petition has acted in ways that have shown that it's clearly compromised. The National Human Rights Commission three months ago got a petition from the Coalition of Gender-Based Violence Responders. I was signatory to that petition about Karen. When you file a petition, lodge a petition anywhere, the first thing, the standard practice is that they meet you to interview you and get more facts, which you cannot distill in the petition. After that is done, they now look for the family of Karen Apuch and have interviews. It is after those steps are taken that you go to Premier Academy or invite them. What, what the National Human Rights Commission has succeeded in doing is to tell us that they are a bunch of jokers who are compromised because they neither called me a peti the petitioner who filed a complaint about the death of Karen, neither did they call um, the mother of Karen or any family member whatsoever. But we have it on record that more than two months ago, they met with Premier Academy Lugwe. And after that meeting, they have done nothing else. What more shows compromise? What more demonstrates compromise? The Social Services Secretariat also said it was waiting for autopsy reports. Now, global best practice, and you can interview a medical doctor, as many as you want. When a medical report has told you rape has occurred, you can only investigate to know duration and all of that, but you cannot, in your autopsy, go outside it. So, medical report confirmed rape. Form Pam Joseph, Deputy Commissioner of Police, F FCT Police Command, confirmed that autopsy report confirmed that the child was raped. You can check it out on YouTube on AIT platform. He said so.